is this equal? Indeed, I'm so glad for this opportunity once again to share from the word of God. And today happens to be the very special Sunday for all the Protestants who join together in worshiping God, because today is the Reformation Sunday. And uh, tomorrow was the day in which uh, Martin Luther, he stood up in the Roman Catholic Church with his 95 cases. I've entitled my sermon because as I saw in the lectionary, there was uh, no theme, though there was a cause for celebration, but there was no theme. But based on Luke chapter 11, verse 33 to 54, the portion that we have read, I have entitled my sermon as, Let your light shine in darkness. Let your light shine in darkness. God has appointed all of us to shine for his glory. No matter wherever we are, whether in the church, in our private life, or in the workplaces, God has called us to shine for his glory. I would like to say something about the Reformation Sunday, why it is so important for all of us to celebrate. Because in the 16th century, particularly in the year 1517, when the European Christian, mostly the Roman Catholic Christian who were in majority, they had a, a strategy to raise fund in the church. And in order to raise fund in the church, the church has decided to give assurance to everyone for the forgiveness of sin and the surety of him, heaven based on the fund they, are, they will pay to the church. And not only that, over that, the church also will pay them, a, uh, give them a certificate that will certify that they, their citizenship in heaven will be secured. And it went on to such an extent that uh, in order to raise funds, even the church also started praying for the dear ones who have already gone to be with the Lord, to lessen their pain in hell, at the same time to cleanse them and cleanse their purity. So that is what the church was doing. It is very sad that uh, the church was doing that, not only that, the church was justifying of these wrong and of need and time. And in that culture, when nobody was speaking about it, Martin Luther as a person comes along and speaks about the wrongdoings, about the bad practices of the church. In October chapter, uh, in October, October day 31st, 1517, Martin Luther comes up with 50, 95, 7, and, sorry, 95 pieces, and he pastes all these uh, pieces or arguments uh, on the on the doorpost of the church, and there he gives the reason why such selling of indulgence has to be object has to be rejected. There must be objection for this. Luther during that time was also rejected by the leader of the church, but he could stand on his ground because he knew that he is standing for the truth. Luther insisted that we are not forgiven because of uh, anything we are doing or because of the payment that we are making to the church. But he says, insist uh, vehemently, that it is, it is not because of your work, but it is what God has done for us. It is God through Jesus Christ. What he has done, it is because of that we will be able to enter into the kingdom of God. As we celebrate the Reformation Sunday, the purpose is we celebrate the lives of men and women throughout the history of Christianity. Those who have, those who have stand, those who have stood for the, the good of the church, and those who have given their lives as martyr, those who have brought revolution, correction, so that the church worship pattern will be will be maintained and it will it has to be corrected and the pure form has to be introduced. Luther was very particular in saying God loved, loved us first and God continued to show his grace and mercy because of which we are able to enter into eternal life. There were five things which Luther said which is important even for our church today to notice. 
He said, when a church is building her, uh, her uh, doctrines, her uh, teachings, uh, running herself, has to look for these five things. The first one is sola scriptura. That means by scripture alone. Scripture has to be valued. No matter what tradition we are, we should go in line with the scripture. One thing I really admire about the Anglican Church is the beautiful prayer that is mentioned. Each prayer, if you see, nothing is without the inspiration of, or, or, or without the quotation from the Bible. Everything is in line with the Bible you can find. So there also we can find, so here he's saying that scripture is something very important that has to be valued when you are applying in your day-to-day -day life or whether you are performing something that has to be based on scripture. It also says sola fida means by faith alone, not by our work, but it is by faith alone we have to, we can, we have to enter into the eternal life or we can get salvation. Sola Gritia, he says that only grace alone can enable a person to enter into the eternal life. And through grace, we are saved. Sola Christus and Solo Christo means Christ alone. And through Christ alone, we can approach to God the Father. And lastly, he says, it is glory to God alone. It's wonderful to note because Luther was very particular. Maybe people were seeking for favor. People were seeking for something which is not justified. But all that we do, the reason behind or the aim behind everything should be to glorify God. The title that we have read this evening or this morning about which I was speaking in the morning that uh, we need to shine, shine for God and God alone. There were Three passages were out, or we read from some also. And in those passages, if you carefully look, then the summary will come out. Like there was something going on not so good in the in the society or in that place of the time. And uh, the scripture that we have read, the three passages is saying that you have to come out of the old ways and enter into the new ways. In 2 Kings chapter 23, 1 to 9, we have read about Joshua. And uh, Joshua was one of the good kings of uh, Judah. Because in Judah, there were 21 kings. Out of them, only six were very good. And among the six, Joshua was one among them. Because in uh, Israel, there was no good king. And they were punished by God because of that. And Joshua, Joshua during his time, he called all the elders of the of Judah and Jerusalem. He called the priest. The priests also were not left. Everyone was called and he read before them the law of God, which was found in the temple during the time of Joshua. Joshua. And uh, he also reminded them of the new covenant that God has made with them. He reminded them that it is important and vital for the for the people of God, as they are planning to settle down, as they are living in this land which God has given them, the promised land, they have to obey the word of God. He removed all the uh, all the shrines and temples of the pagan god. He destroyed them. He smashed all their idols. And he also took all the ashes and he, uh, he, he, uh, he took it away so that even the ashes could not be found by the Israelites. And that was the condition. He wanted that anything that is an abomination to God should be completely eradicated, removed. In Psalm also we have read, God is, kindly, God is continuously reminding that uh, I have rescued you. I have answered you during the time when you called me up. And now you should know that I am the Lord your God. And again, God is reminding them even though I have done this, my people are uh, reluctant to listen to me. They are not listening to me. If they don't listen, they will bear the consequences. And if they listen, certainly they will be blessed. I will remove their pain. This is the assurance and this is the beauty of our God. That when we surrender, he is always there to embrace us. And when we are ready to obey and turn from our ways, then he is always there available for us. 
but when we keep on doing things which is not pleasing to him, it will certainly make us accountable. I would like to say only four things in a very nutshell within few minutes about how our life will shine. The first thing is when our world and our life is centered around God, then our light can shine. During the time of Jesus, Pharisees were giving more importance to purity rule. But Jesus was concerned about the purification of heart and soul. And for him, the relationship with God is very important, was very important. That's why church has to center its teaching, its work on God and God alone. Secondly, we have to be bold for God as Martin Luther was. Martin Luther was fearless. He did not listen to man, but he listened to God. And he was not in fear of losing anything because he knew that he was standing for God. He did not care. Uh, he, he do care for the people of God. He did care for the people of God because in the next generation, there should be people who will be corrected and who will follow God. And that was his concern. Let us be bold for God. The third thing is, let us condemn what is evil. Let us not keep silence or not keep uh, enter into a culture of silence. But we have to speak what is evil. And the fourth thing is, we have to get rid of the hypocritic life, which God hates. Hypocritic life, which Jesus is also condemning in today's passage in Luke chapter 11, 33 to 54. You may do so many things, but your agenda is something different. God searches our heart, and he wants us to be completely reformed and changed from within. May our lives continue to shine for God's glory. This Reformation Sunday, the life and example of Martin Luther, become our example in life. God bless us all together.